If you are part of the PTU Wave 1 build or a content creator, you may have been lucky enough to see a Mercury Star Runner in your build. This is one of the most highly anticipated ships of all time and from a manufacturer that we haven't seen anything from prior, Crusader Industries. Personally, it's one of my favorite manufacturers. The design styles, the atmosphere the ships give, all of which very Star Wars, very modern. And it doesn't matter whether it's the hot, hot dunes of Ariel around Hurston, or whether it's the cold, cold climate of Clio around Microtech, I think you'll find that the Mercury Star Runner fits in pretty much no matter where it is. Now, before you get too excited, if you don't know what the Star Runner is, it's not some fancy smancy new combat ship. It's not even a dedicated cargo hauler. It's another data running ship. Why do we have another ship for a profession that's not even in game yet? I don't know. But before all of that, and before we discuss the rest of the features and what the Star Runner does actually bring to us all, let's briefly discuss the history of Crusader Industries Mercury Star Runner. You'll find that the ship page reads as follows. The Mercury checks all the boxes expected of a dependable carrier vessel. And then, sir, if you need a fast and unscathed, you can do better than the Mercury. Built with the same engineering and design principles that has made Crusader the go-to manufacturer of galactic transport on any scale, the Star Runner chassis sets new standards for data and cargo conveyance. Now, I'm sure you can get from that text whatever you want, but it's clear to me that Crusader have designed this ship to be dependable, reliable, and tough. Think of it like the Constellation Mark II, an all-rounder, everyday go-to vessel. Nothing tells you more about that than the interior. And usually, as is with YouTube videos, we save the best to last, but this time, I'm gonna start with it. The cockpit is by far my favorite part of this entire ship. It gives me fantastic Millennium Falcon vibes, and frankly, I think it's a design masterpiece. From every painstaking detail to the gun racks and the little buttons on the dash, to the red leather accent chairs. Everything about this ship screams detail, and it's very unique, actually. Somehow, once again, SIG have managed to give a brand new ship a brand new identity with nothing more than just sheer design passion. Now, on the topic of individuality, the Star Runner is the first ship of its kind to introduce the new door mechanics seen in Inside Star Citizen. It's also the first one that allows us to manually lock them which is fantastic and actually something that's been sought after by the community for a long time. While it's locking the doors, you can turn off the manual sensors, which enables the door to open automatically. This is something that you might just prefer as a personal preference to your individual ship choices. It's also something that you might use against incoming invaders to halt them in their tracks. So the first ship of its kind to include light switches. Now, what you make of that, I don't know, but it's definitely something new and unique, and it might entertain you to come up with some fantastic use case scenarios for those light switches. Now, I know we're starting unconventionally from the cockpit of this ship, but because this ship is more like a home than any other, what does it matter? This is the recreational room. It's the room with the built-in chessboard that is completely interactable and playable. That's right, you can pick up every individual piece and move them around. So yeah, content. Now, it is the only functioning part of this entire room. Unfortunately, we still don't have the ability to use the microwaves, use the coffee maker, or even eat the food or read the books that are on display. We can sit in the chair, but I don't really think I'd use that as an excuse for usable items. Just imagine, though, you and Chewbacca playing chess, just like good old days. Now, getting up, and leaving this habitation room, there's nothing else to see, we head back into the bridge. And opposite us is our living quarters. It's our habitation room. It's where we go to sleep and shit. It's a nice place, actually. It's cozy. Room for uh, two or more people. Uh, not massive. Definitely not massive. But definitely big enough 
for a small crew. Fortunately, the monitors are not interactable yet again, and they do not provide any new in-game features. But where are these toilets, I hear you ask? Well, don't you fret, they are hidden away in these two double side panel doors. You can lock them from the outside, which definitely is gonna to lead to some pranks, but don't worry, there is also buttons on the inside to let yourself out if they're working. Now, I genuinely don't know if Sig's intention here is to actually be stuck in the loo, but if that is, uh, I can't wait for someone to have that happen to them on stream for the first time. More than likely it'll be me due to some cock up error. But here they are, two toilets for you, girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, your Chewbacca, to shit in peace and shower as well. Don't forget, they are double shower and poopers. It's fantastic, really. Right, heading back to the bridge, we're going to go to the server room, the main central piece and hub for this entire ship. Frankly, this is a massive, massive area, and it accounts for probably 65% of the entire ship. This is where your top turret and bottom turret access points are as well, so make sure you remember that in case you ever get attacked by some wannabe pirates. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a server room without servers, and here they are. What these eventually get used for is still up for speculation, but here they are, and there's a lot of them. Moving on, the scanning room. Another annoyingly unusable feature and space within the ship because scanning can all be done from the pilot section and there is no advantage to doing it from this room. But when that advantage is implemented, it will work here. And one of your members will have to sit in this room alone, scanning. Hopefully, for your safety. Now, leaving the scanning room, taking a right, we end up at the cargo, or the entrance to this vessel. It's substantially quite large. It's about the same size as a Constellation's interior uh, cargo space. However, it's a bit more useful. Thanks to the ramp, you might find the getting in and out to be a lot faster and more reliable, especially with desync. Uh, it does accept an Ursa Rover. I have seen people have a few issues trying to get it in though, but it definitely does fit. So just keep trying. And um, what else fits in here? Well, probably about 10 buggies. Um, a razor, maybe, if you can squeeze it through the uh, little gap there, the little roof. Um, otherwise, it's a substantially large space. Again, it's not trying to compete with a freelancer, but it's definitely larger than anything else for its price point. Now, Next to the cargo room is the engineering section. Behind these walls, there are probably access points for repair. You can see some of the components actually stuck to the walls there behind me, small green boxes. And well, that's it really. That is the main and labeled compartments for this ship. Now, notice how I said main labeled compartments because behind this panel that you've just seen me open up is a secret tunnel. This switch, opens a sliding door to reveal the hidden away compartments of this ship one of the main unique features in fact it's actually large enough to walk in multiple people actually uh, as well as store quite a few small boxes one scu the regular container size that you have when you decide to store your items this space is actually designed specifically for smuggling illicit or illegal or just very very sensitive equipment or goods this is a place that police and bounty hunters alike, or pirates, won't be able to scan and sense any items in. It's supposed to be a secure spot. Now, whether that's actually implemented right now, I don't know, I've not tested it. It's unlikely, but that is the whole point of this entire area. It is also a network of tunnels linking different rooms to one another. As you can see from the clip above, this is taken from the live stream Last night, in fact, where I spent an entire evening hiding under there here, attempting to play my own game of Among Us. Unfortunately, due to the cramped space, I don't think takedown animations work. They wouldn't let me do anything. Which is unfortunate. One thing I didn't mention earlier, even though they were all around us, were these hidden hatches. Now these are actually underneath and pretty much near every single major part of the ship. And the reason I kept it a secret was to show you how effective it is. Look, here I am back in the server room, right in front of the bridge. Now imagine if I was infiltrating this ship and I knew my way around those bottom sneaky passages. 
Well, I could effect effectively, with a small group, completely neutralize every area of this ship without even having to go through the main doors, without any locks or limitations. In fact, this is one of the most interesting parts of this entire ship, and actually makes it feel very real. This ship feels big, it feels like it was man-made, and it feels like it fits in with the theme of Star Citizen, as well as with the theme of realism. I do believe that most ships in real life would have small passageways like this, mainly for maintenance. Maybe not a secret chessboard table moving hatch door system, but they definitely would still have maintenance hatches. And I hope this is something that SIG carry on to future endeavors with their ship designs. Now that I've taken you on this magical interior ride, let's have a brief overview of the exterior components of this ship. Now you already know it comes with two turrets, each turret equipped with two size two weapons. Pilot also having two size two gimbaled guns at his disposal. Missile racks? Well, nothing too exciting. Again, two size two from the looks of things, as well as one size three. This is repeated on both sides of the ship, but do you really need weapons in a ship designed to be resilient and fast? The truth is this ship was never meant to break records of any kind. It's simply a fantastic all-rounder ship and really that's what is limiting it. it it can't break out into being more aggressive because then it would outcompete with the constellation and make that obsolete and it can't be too big in the cargo space or else you know what's the point of a freelancer really this ship fits in quite nicely into that role of you know i like playing this game solo but i have got friends and we just want to get on with our lives that is where this ship fits in i think the balance and ecosystem of the game as it stands today. Because it really does have some fantastic features, an amazing canopy with fields of view that frankly push other things out of the water. It is quite an eye opener in terms of design this ship and it feels amazing to be in. So if you want a ship that just feels right, a ship that can do what you need to do on a day to day basis in Star Citizen, and a ship that is tough enough to survive most things, but obviously doesn't break the bank, well, then I recommend the Mercury Star Runner to you. Am I going to get one? No. Because I have other ships in mind, and I'm not the sort of player that's going to be using this ship on a day-to-day -day basis. But, I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes the new, most popular ship in the verse. Now, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. It really was a joy to make it so quickly after the release of the Mercury Star Runner. And if you want to see more content like this, head over to Twitch and check me out live straight after watching this video, why don't you? And if you do want to see anything more, check out the rest of the videos on this page or check out some of my VODs. Again, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. And if also you could subscribe, it really helps well, show YouTube that this content is worth watching. And frankly, I love you guys. If you didn't like it, well, that's fine too. Just let me know in the comments down below. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.